The Democrats are taking over the House, and that means some of their swampiest leaders are taking over some very important committees. In fact, one of them, who's in line to regulate Wall Street and the financial industry, has literally been called one of the most corrupt members of Congress. Yes, she's back. Maxine Waters is tonight's Swamp Watch. Maxine Waters has, of course, become notorious for her role in whipping up political incivility and violence. If you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. But that is far from the first stain on her record in Congress. For starters, Waters was the subject of a House Ethics Committee investigation in 2010. In the midst of the financial crisis, she arranged a meeting between then Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson and top executives of One United, a bank. One United later got $12 million in bailout funds, handily enough for Maxine Waters, whose husband was a major shareholder. In 2004, Maxine Waters and her husband, Sidney Williams, each separately bought one United stock worth between $250,000 and half a million dollars. Her husband also held separate stock worth another $250,000 to half a million. That same year, Waters sold her one United stock and her husband sold somewhere between a quarter and a half of his holdings. But he became a member of the bank's board and remained there until 2008. By the time Maxine Waters scheduled the meeting with the Treasury Secretary, her husband owned approximately $350,000 in one United stock, all of which would have likely gone down the drain without the bailout money she helped secure. How lovely for Maxine to have the power to protect her investments with taxpayer bailouts. What a true woman of the people she is. The scandal led Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington to name Waters one of the most corrupt members of Congress in 2011. It's no surprise, then, that this champion of the poor and downtrodden owns multiple properties in California, including a multi-million dollar home that isn't even in her district. Here's another way Maxine Waters brings in the cash. Slate mailers. They're sample ballots that Waters sends to about 200,000 voters in the Los Angeles area, highlighting the local officials that Waters endorses. What's wrong with that, you might say? Good for her for being an engaged activist. Uh, Here's the catch. She charges tens of thousands of dollars to be listed on her mailer. When San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom was running for lieutenant governor, he paid Waters $45,000 for a spot. Senator Kamala Harris paid $33,000 to be on the mailer when she was running for state attorney general. And guess who's in charge of the organization that runs this scheme? None other than Waters' daughter, Karen. But her husband's in on it, too. He reportedly made nearly half a million dollars working part-time as a consultant to a municipal bond underwriting firm, which he used to court some of the politicians to pay for a slate mailer endorsement. In one response to reporters' questions about these schemes to enrich her family, Waters said, quote, They do their business and I do mine. Well, that's one way of putting it, I suppose. Her husband said his wife files all the proper disclosure of his clients. And beyond that, you can't ask me anything about my business. Of course not. You're making money off the back of your wife's position as a member of Congress. How dare anyone question that? But the corruption goes much deeper. With Maxine Waters, it's institutional corruption. Look what she recently said about the banks once she's chair of the Financial Services Committee. I'm going to do to you what you did to us. So what exactly did the financial services industry do to you, Maxine? Lined your pockets, that's what. Here's a few examples. You took 10,000 from American Express, 11,000 from UBS, 10,000 from State Farm Insurance, 10,000 from Aflac Insurance, 10,000 from the Managed Funds Association, 10,000 from the Mortgage Bankers Association, 10,000 from the National Association of Federal Credit Unions, 10,000 from the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors. All told, Waters has brought in over $230,000 from the securities and investment industry and over $330,000 from the insurance industry since she became ranking member of the Financial Services Committee in 2012. Once she's the chair of that committee, you can bet her conflict donations will skyrocket as a result. She also brings in plenty of cash from lobbyists whose clients she regulates. 
Now, this one is so unbelievable, I thought it wasn't true. But it is. One of those lobbyists is Mike Roos, who previously served with Waters in the California State Assembly. In 2009, he was representing a client called Nehemiah Corp, which had significant business interests in the mortgage industry. Waters, his friend of 30 years, was then in Congress and chairman of the Financial Services Housing Subcommittee. So, they worked together to push legislation that just happened to benefit his client's bottom line. But this turned out to be much more than a favor for a friend. A close look revealed that Waters' lobbyist friend paid her husband $15,000 as a consultant at the same time she was sponsoring the legislation. Maxine Waters is up to her neck in the swamp. She's used her public office to protect her investments, benefit her friends and enrich her family, all while taking hundreds of thousands of dollars in conflict donations from members of the industries that she regulates. If you see her at a restaurant or in a department store or a gasoline station, do tell her we're not impressed. Politely, of course.